a very good afternoon to our speaker mr abhay mangaldas genicus members bni ahmedabad region and bni members from across india welcome to the unique series of learning from a legend organized by bni genicus chapter sponsored by pb ceramic manik ratna and pelican air conditioner and supported by vintana umia motors and radhe prinni mithas the session will be live on social media by vyaparjagat.com thank you for your participation in today's unique genicus Le virtual learning series 4 learning from a legend series is live on every monday and friday of the week with different speakers remember just a few special announcements for today please mute your line but keep your video on we will have a special question and answer round please drop your questions in the chat box one of our team coordinator will pass those questions to me please be sure you are using high speed internet a high quality headset and webcam be sure you are in front of a professional background good afternoon once again everyone and a special warm welcome to our legendary speaker a heritage entrepreneur mr abhay mangaldas and observers good afternoon. good afternoon sir i would like to start this part of the series by introducing the learning from a legend team of genicus chapter my name is sudarshan golecha as a president of genicus mr jignesh patel as vice president and jaimin sukhadia as secretary treasurer our lfl team is of vivek parik dishank shah rishab zavedi rahul keshwani nilav parekh urja patel bhoumik jasani and sujan singh gular these are the guys who have helped helped us for every series to be such successful event i would now like mr rishab zavedi to introduce today's elite legend mr abhay mangaldas rishab over to you uh, thank you sudarshan uh, good afternoon abhay sir good afternoon rishab um, ladies and gentlemen i have a very interesting bio sheet to read of today's legend abhay mangaldas abhay is the founder and director of the house of mangaldas a cluster of four heritage properties in ahmedabad that have been restored by him and now operate as heritage hotels and homestays with restaurants galleries museum shops and curated experiences since the last two and half decades he has been revitalizing tangible and intangible heritage in the city by actively documenting and supporting crafts and cultural activities he has in the process contributed significantly to ahmedabad certification as india's first unesco world heritage city he is also the managing trustee of shreyas foundation since 2010 an educational institution for children started by his grandmother leena ben sara bhai and where madam montessori was the first president it has on its campus in ahmedabad an experimental school from kg to 12th grade with 1400 children on last count a folk art museum theaters sports centers music and dance schools equestrian school camping art and craft centers farming culinary school as well as children's village for socially orphaned kids shreyas is one of the greenest properties in ahmedabad with a density of 1000 trees per acre it has achieved this using the miyawaki method of dense plantation on its premises Abhay is the convener of Ahmedabad chapter of the Indian National Trust for Arts and Culture Cult Cultural Heritage Intact since 2010 Intact Ahmedabad chapter serves as a platform for heritage awareness for school children through monthly activities amongst Abhay's ongoing projects are initiatives to design and build prefabricated structures that question the paradigm of conventional building methods both for public as well as private use he is also creating a new multidisciplinary space for experimentation in art culture and cuisine that is scheduled to open later in 2020 abhay likes to keep fit and prefers natural medicines to keep healthy he gyms regularly and plays squash on weekends he can be found horse riding at the foundation or spending time at the children's village He has a keen interest in architecture, art, and design that he pursues by attending fairs, biennials in India and abroad. He listens to audio books, autobiographies, and non-fiction, and inspired and is inspired by icons 
who disrupted convention like Elon Musk and Steve Jobs. Abhay has a MSc degree in mass communication from Boston University with a computer graphics major. He lives and works in Ahmedabad with two pit bull terriers and one boxer. He considers himself a global citizen. He questions norms and he believes that an individual's freedom is the most prized privilege of life. That's pr probably why he's still a bachelor. Ladies and gentlemen, over to Abhay Mangalas. Thank you, Rishab. That was supposed to be a joke. But, uh, <laughs> thank you for, uh, thank you, Ganika's Samdhava chapter for having me here. It's a great privilege and I'm delighted that you have uh, members from uh, across the board attending. Uh, I appreciate all of you logging on at this time. So I hope we have an interesting session in the next uh, hour or so. So uh, this session is supposed to be a kind of a learning from my journey. I already uh, made it very clear that this title is a bit embarrassing because by no means uh, am I a legend, far from it. But I do have some heroes of my own. So to just understand the, the makeup of this audience, I had taken permission of the uh, administrators to do a question at the start of the session. And to understand what kind of people you consider are heroes, you know. So uh, I think the, the admin people will monitor this. So I'll start with the question and then we'll go on. My question to you is, that uh, amongst true legends and very important people in the world, I'll name four. And it would be great if you can give the answer in your chat box as one, two, three, four, or four, three, two, one, or two, three, one, four, whichever sequence, the names that I will uh, write will be appearing on your screen. They are. First is Ratan Tata. Second is Mukesh Ambani. Third is Elon Musk. Fourth is Donald Trump. So out of these four people, just give your sequence of preference of who you consider are your heroes. So go. sir, we've yeah. already made up a poll. Uh, because you are co-host, you would not be able to see the uh, uh, process. But uh, we've already made up a, a poll where uh, we are getting answers from uh, the members as well. Okay. Okay. And yes. can you so, share uh, some data of from the previous question we asked to the... Uh, so we had put up a question uh, before you were here, sir. So we, yes. we asked uh, our audience that uh, what would you all... Uh, just a second, I will just repeat the question. What would you like to know from uh, Mr. Abhay Mangaldas? One, a heritage journey. Second, personal life experience. Third, business aspects. Or fourth, all of the above. So, Bhaumik, what was the result? The answer was all of the above. <laughs> okay. So, that, that is the answer for the poll what we had run. Thank I'll, you. I'll take a half, so, a, half a minute more for uh, the polls to complete. But say you can continue. No problem. Please. No problem. It, it doesn't really impact what I'm going to say right now, but maybe in the question and answer session. Because everybody's priorities in life at different stages of life, stages of life are different. And so are mine. So uh, that is the reason why I asked this question. And the second question is also similar that in your career at this moment, I know all of you are entrepreneurs. Uh, what is your real motivator? Gold, glory, or God? That's one, two, three. Gold, glory, or God? God, of course, being karma yogi and doing it as a mission, I mean, as your purpose in life and all that. So anyway, these two questions you can answer at your leisure and we'll get a answer, the result at the end of the session and we will maybe do Q&A based on that. So I will... Uh, again, uh, really appreciate, uh, uh, thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity because I got a chance to review my journey so far uh, in a kind of a whistle stop tour over 20 slides, which I'm going to share with you. The format of this I have made in the following way that it starts from childhood, then there is teens, then there is early career. And I consider myself now in mid-career. 
uh, and then it follows by what I plan to do over the next 10 years, my personal goals, and finally, I'll end with two interesting ideas for the government to raise money fast post-COVID to, to finance the deficit that will occur. So this is the structure of uh, my talk today. I'm so starting from uh, childhood, I mean, I was, uh, I was born in a, in a fairly uh, well-established old family of Ahmedabad. Here is a picture of my immediate family. I have two brothers and my mother and father. My mother passed away some time ago. We lived in, a, we live, continue to live in a, in a Ellis Bridge area where my great grandfather, who was one of the true legends of the city, uh, built a home for his whole family, homes actually. So I'm lucky to stay in one of them. I was always an average student in school. I went to Shreya's Foundation, which was started by my grandmother, and uh, I was very keen on sports. My hero at that time was my grandfather, who was a very suave, very respected uh, business personality. So that was my childhood, and here I am shown 11 years. That's me. And then... Through school, I kind of trudged along like anybody has average grades. And by the time I reached um, 12th grade, there was a custom in my family to take a year off, which is, I think, one of the most unusual and, uh, unusual and important things one can do at the end of the schooling. So I, I would encourage all our students also to take a year off after 12th, because when I took a year off, I always wanted to be a businessman. And... I started my first venture. So this photograph that you see is that of uh, where House of MG is. It used to be called MG Bungalow, Mangal Girdhar Bungalow. And you can see on the first floor, there is something called AM. So that was my one room shop of uh, ready-made garments. So right from 12th grade, I started doing business where we bought the fabric from mills and we made the design and it was, I had like four or five tailor, tailors and four or five staff members on the shop floor. And we made, made men's clothing. So this was when I was in uh, post 12th standard and I continued this through college. I did uh, morning college and I continued this. <laughs> I'll show you, it was very successful for that time because there were no ready-made shops at that time. Uh, this is this is one of our ads. It shows a friend of mine posing in some Gatsby-inspired uh, pose with with cotton cotton shirt and cotton trouser, which of course today is very common, but at that time it wasn't. So this I continued till I finished college in Saint Xavier's, uh, and I had to go abroad. So when I when I finished college and I had to go for further studies for my master's degree. I put a board outside my shop saying that the promoter is closing the shop temporarily because he's going abroad for further studies. So I went abroad and I did my master's and came back to India and immediately, uh, this was in computer graphics. And the moment I finished, I shifted back to India with the idea of starting my own business in Mumbai because I thought Ahmedabad was too off the grid and there weren't enough opportunities. So I shifted to Bombay. This was also the time of my youth, you know. It was confusion in the head, who you are, what you want, out of life. And there was a lot of personal family issues happening at that time in my family. Difficult time, I would say. It was a time of real struggle. Um, I suppose all of us go through that. But my entrepreneurial journey really began with the uh, first venture in Mumbai, which was a multimedia studio. At that time, having a computer graphics and all that was very new. The Mac was what, Mac 2? I think it was Mac 2, which was the first uh, color, color version of the Mac computer. And I was involved in a new startup, which did computer graphics and multimedia, which was, again, one of those real bootstrap type of setups. And we struggled. Uh, I used to walk home, have long days. But the first taste of publicity and success was uh, 
digital arts project that I did at that time. Here is a photograph with all the very famous artists who work with us. You see MF Hussain on the left, and the lady is the person I was working with, and there's Atul Dodia. I don't know how many of you are interested in art, but these are very big names. Lakshman Shreshta, uh, there's Manjit Baba, Akbar Padamsi, Navjot Altaf, and that's me. And this is the computer where all these people and several more, we got them to work in our studio and create artworks. So that was my first kind of uh, important project and it received very major media publicity around the country and we did exhibitions in Bombay of the artworks and we did one in uh, the National Gallery of Modern Sorry, I hear sounds. Huh? And um, so this was my first big project and then I would say in the early career, the art venture and all kind of sputtered to a close. They just didn't work. It lost steam. And at that time, we had a textile mill. Our family was in the textile business. So we had a textile mill in Bombay. And uh, it was already, you know, in the downward spiral. It was just in big debt and there was not much money. But I started going to it to see what I could do. And at the same time, it, the personal struggles which I spoke about, uh, I would say this was the early part of my career, was about you know having a famous last name but not having financial capital to support that, you know, all the lifestyle that I was supposed to be leading. So it was a, a slightly difficult time. But anyway, I was going to this mill and after many years of doing well, I would say a couple of years of not doing much. This was a time of early liberalization. And slowly the government was allowing textile mills to sell land. So this was the first big opportunity for me to see if we could do something with our property. Uh, strangely enough, nobody else saw this in the family and they wanted to get rid of the mills. But uh, I and my cousin got together and prevented the senior members from uh, selling the setup. And they, everybody in the family said, I, if you don't want us to sell, then you better buy us out. And this was the first big gamble that we did to put together some money. Mostly, most of it came from my, my, my cousin's wife, who he had just married. And she put up the money to buy everybody out from the family. Because most of us old families come from big joint operations and there is a lot of cross folding and I'm sure many of you have faced that if you're second or third or fourth generation. So it was a godsend opportunity to, to separate all this and the land deal sure enough materialized and finally there was money in the bank. So this was a threshold moment in the early career to have liquidity and uh, be able to do something on my own. So finally, I was an entrepreneur with a bank balance. I suppose all of you in BNI are already in reasonable success and have a bank balance, but I, and this was the first time I had a bank balance and I could actually pursue what I wanted to do. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I wanted to do business. So it was financial services, sun-dried foods, designing and developing innovative products, all these kind of things. Innovative products, I have something to show you something I designed and patented right then. Here is a toothbrush with an inbuilt tongue cleaner. So you see in the handle of the toothbrush is a tongue cleaner which comes out and you get a tongue cleaner. I patented this and uh, there were other products I did like a roti maker and I did a, I did a all in one uh, mountaineers toilet kit. So everything came out like a Swiss knife from a toilet kit, from a, from a knife. And there was this tool, roti maker was one which made the kneading the dough and making a chapati, everything possible from a, from a tabletop. So these kind of things I was doing at that time because there was, I was trying to figure out what to do. And it all changed because my father said that you have money and you are now doing this family separation. So separation took a while. So why don't you buy this property in uh, the MG bungalow? and do something with it. My father is an architect. So this is what it looked like at that time. The same bungalow where I had my shop. 
it was in lal darwaja opposite sidi sahib jali this is how it looked there were lots of shops and lots of uh, tenants in there and the only place which i had in my possession was the parking lot that you see here and the terrace on top everything else was tenanted including there was a half of this bungalow was called cg and half is called mg so those of you who have seen the house of mg you see all of it now but earlier there were two parts of it and they were divided at this at this at this line so i bought this half the mg half from the rest of the family members as part of the family separation and started the first restaurant uh, on top because that was the only place available in the whole bungalow the rest of it was occupied by tenants and that was agashi what you see now i'll show a bit of more of it later and i'll share some slides of the journey of the renovation so you get an idea of how do you convert a building like this which is quite decrepit into what it is today so i'll share a few slides to show you that but it started with one restaurant then the second restaurant in the parking lot which is a greenhouse then some tenants got out so we started a uh, few rooms and so on and so forth till it became a full service hotel that you see now uh, i discontinued all my all my other ventures uh, by then so i'll share a few slides showing the journey so here is a photo of thank you here is a photo showing agashi a part of agashi this is how it looked and this is how it is now uh this is another part of the building one terrace this is how it was and this is how it is now um and the house of mg which at that time was just this half you can see it is converted it was fully restored i think by 2000 seven you can see that it's done and this is the cg bungalow the other half which is still owned by my uncle's family i mean at that time and that's when i bought this part of the bungalow and of course today it is like this what was like this is now like this after almost uh i think 18 16 years of getting all the tenants out Uh, many of you may have seen it but for those who haven't this is how it is it's inside and you retained it like a like a house and so i think till about 2010 this was the journey uh, i would say it was uh early career to mid career journey of updating and upgrading and making this this hotel and then three other properties which i won't show just now which we restored and that's how we have a cluster of four in 2010 i my grandmother who ran shreyas foundation said that now i think the trustees have decided that you take over i had never run a charitable foundation till then at all and suddenly i was made a managing trustee of this amazing institution i don't know how many of you have seen shreyas foundation it's quite low key but it is quite a spectacular Yes, oh you see it okay. Um so it was a chance in my mid career to on one hand balance my professional life which is for profit and another part which is completely not for profit where you give time to strengthen what is uh, essentially a charitable cause and but the satisfaction that one gets out of it is just immeasurable and i can share that so i will show you what it looks like here is a picture this is how shreyas is it's full of trees and these are piludis these are amazing old piludi trees uh at shreyas which is where i went myself you clean the class you start your day by cleaning your surroundings your classroom there are of course normal classrooms that we go to and there are facilitators who teach you but essentially they you learn they learn with you so everything is through activity it's a montessori uh, uh, approach 
So there are some unusual activities in our foundation, like we do our own plantation, then whatever we grow, we have our own culinary school where we learn to make healthy stuff. And in a time like this, it's essentially your, uh, your uh, immune system, which is going to hold you in good stead, you know. So to have the right nutrition is something we teach right from childhood. And uh, Shreyas's core philosophy comes from Rabindranath Tagore, which is all about the arts. Perhaps that's why I have such an interest in the arts. So from childhood, I used to participate in full costume dramas like this with music, dance, uh, theater, um, and you learned that as a part of your curriculum. It was, it was in, ingrained in the curriculum. Then, of course, we have uh, the Equestrian School, which I started about seven years ago. Uh, I also started a skating rink and I started a camping facility and we started the swimming pool for children. As soon as they enter KG, we put them in the swimming pool. And many more activities have been started. So it's a really a hub of activities. Uh, we also focus on traditional uh, exercise. This is the Malkam. Other than all modern sports, most of our sports are something that everybody can afford. You don't need fancy shoes or fancy equipment to participate in our uh, sporting activity. And on our campus is, of the above picture is of Balgram kids. We have uh, children from socially difficult backgrounds who come and stay, we adopt them in this village and they live on campus. So we have these kids even now staying there and since the last uh, 60 years, 50 years I think, we've had Balgram kids and who are looked after by foster mothers who you see at the back. We also have a, the bottom part of the photo shows the scholarship program for girls, which we have started since the last uh, six, uh, six to seven years, where we adopt and pay for the fees of girl child from the surrounding shanties who cannot, who, who their parents send the, the boy child to the school, but they leave the girl child or send them to the Angarwadi or to some municipal school and then get them to work, start work from home. But so we are giving them opportunity and finding sponsors to them for them. And if not, we, we take on the, the burden and we take, I mean, it's hardly a burden, but we take on their fees and get them through 12th grade. So essentially the purpose of Shreyas is to, or I believe the purpose of education, at least primary education, is to put a value filter. You know, you have to put a, a value filter in people so that when they go on in life, they can make the right choices. At the end of the day, that's what matters. So this is, I would say, uh, mid-career. And I am at this point where I manage these foundations. I have I head Intac, uh, which is also doing a lot of work with heritage, with, with the school. And now I'm about to go to my next journey, which I've been planning on for the last three years, because I have a habit of uh, trying to completely reinvent myself uh, every now and then. So my, I think my stage for invention has come and I like, uh, I have to shed my present very comfortable avatar to move into a slightly discomfort zone. And that's where uh, I have decided that Maybe from the lessons that I have learned so far. What have I learned? The lessons I've learned is that my heritage is my identity. I am very comfortable in my identity because it's my own heritage. I consider that as my own identity. And I have built everything. I've done everything around that. So that makes me, I think, rooted. Uh, about design, all my life I've done work around design. I have come to the conclusion that less is more. So now coming to that realization also takes a while, but now I'm convinced that less is more. Um, in work, my lesson is God is in the detail. Every small detail adds up to what you finally produce. So eventually it takes time. So the three P's, so to speak, which are my favorite P's for success are patience, perseverance, and 
prudence. Prudence, of course, comes after experience and uh, having been through this journey. So in school and even today, I try to question everything. I don't take anything as a given. I just question anything which says, okay, this is how it is done, Amash thai, then that means that needs to be questioned. So that is how I live my life. And when you, when you question something, it always opens a window to a new discovery. So this is uh, how I've done and my new project is based on that. And finally, that every challenge is a great opportunity, including this challenge that we are facing right now. I think it's an opportunity. Uh, that is there. So um, now moving to my next years, next 10 years, I am moving from micromanagement to macro management. All of us in our careers have this habit of micromanaging things. And when you want to pivot to a slightly broader scale, you have to move from micro to macro. Now, how do you do that? So the effort that we put into practice in our small businesses is, and in our foundation is first to standardize, then to document, then to delegate, set up an external audit, upskill and repeat. You keep repeating this. You standardize, document, delegate, audit, upskill and repeat. So this is the way to move up and keep moving up the, the curve and not flatten yourself. Uh, and this is what I'm trying to do with my businesses. And for uh, opportunities, I look for inefficiencies. And inefficiencies, I see great inefficiencies in buildings and in the way schooling is there today. So my entire focus is in reimagining buildings so here's one slide showing a reimagined building and reimagining schooling. I think there are many builders amongst you. So you, you are just now probably practicing one of the most environmentally difficult, challenging tasks of building the way you're building, you know. And any building in India is a hugely wasteful, inefficient exercise. How do we do we make it efficient? So this was the question that I asked myself because I was looking after all these old buildings, which I have to continue to look after. So I have come up with this idea of building buildings in a factory and putting them on site. Here, what you see is uh, one of our uh, new villas, which is at a high-end uh, resort for fragile landscapes, which is under construction in a factory shed. This is how it looks at the moment. So this is the same, same design and it all falls apart, becomes a kit, gets into a, a trailer and can be transported anywhere. Uh, we have three designs in the pipeline, we have, but one, the other one I'd like to show you is uh, this one. On the top corner, you see a 3D rendering of a kind of a, 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 a dome with a container in front of it. The, the reason why it's placed like that in the visual is that the entire dome fits into this 20 foot container. And it's made up of about 230 separate parts. And here in the big picture, you see the actual dome, which is being under construction in Ahmedabad, which is going to act as a, a gallery. Uh, as a as a art and multidisciplinary space that uh, I spoke about in my resume in my bio, so um, this is how I imagine buildings to be. They have no foundation. They pack into a box. They are built like cars, or they 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 can go anywhere in the world. They're efficient and they can be put up very quickly. And they're also modular, so you can keep adding to them. So this is my way of reimagining buildings. And how do I reimagine schooling? I'll, I'll get out of my slides and move back to my, I have made a set of goals, which I want to share with you. Uh, this is before I do that, do we have a, do we have the result of that poll? Yes, sir. We do. Uh, the, the first one as in uh, whom would you like to meet? Yes. Is that the one? Right. Okay. I'm sharing the results on the screen. So the first uh, person that they're saying is uh, Ratan, uh, Ratan Tata. 
The okay. second one is Elon Musk, and the third one is Mukesh Ambani. No okay. one's voted up for Donald Trump. Okay, <laughs> that's interesting. Correct. That's interesting. So it's interesting that fifty-two percent is it? Eighty-five percent have voted for Ratan Tata. Eighty-five uh, percent, yes, course, sir. Uh, yeah. Okay, so it looks like everybody in the in the audience didn't didn't uh, participate in the poll. But yes, never mind. Never. So eighty-five percent. That's interesting because it is indeed true that. For me, though uh, Elon Musk is uh, truly inspiring, I would like to also balance life the way Mr. Tata seems to be doing as an inspiration. So the goals that I used to set myself—I mean, I've set my, for myself as a as a mid-career approaching late-career person—is to create a self-sustaining ecosystem that nurtures ethics, learning. Lifelong learning and aesthetics. So anything I do from now has to go through this filter. That it has to nurture ethics, it has to nurture learning, and it has to nurture aesthetics, which is to do with design and visual, the dynamics of it all, all, all round. And of course, on a personal front, I think I would really like to. Dance like no one is watching. That's one of my problems. I think I would really like to let go of all inhibitions. I think I have less inhibitions than most people, but I am still quite inhibited. And of course, finally, to to discover love that sets you free, not that binds you down. So that's my my goal for the for the future. And. to the the last the last thing that i said i share with you are two great ideas i think for the government to make quick uh to raise quick funds first is to start a national corona lottery you know lotteries are an amazing revenue source kerala has a lottery last year it did 10000 crores and this year it is estimated to fetch 11800 crores so if there was a nationwide lottery it could be 1.5 lakh crores and uh, the the real uh, suggestion for amdavad which many of you are gujarat or many of you live here will maybe agree is to make the heritage listed buildings in the world heritage city to have license they give them liquor license for mild spirits only for beer and wine so if you give a liquor license only to a heritage certified building what it does is not only does it save the heritage of the amdavad which is a world heritage city and its heritage is crumbling because nobody has money to restore it this will give it money there will be huge commerce happening around it the real estate will go up and of course the revenue to the government will shoot up so these are my post covid suggestions to the government but well, thank you very much for listening uh, now we can maybe throw it up to questions yeah so thank you very much uh, well, sir that was really interesting the facts uh, you have let us know i have a few points noted out if i am wrong you can put it out as i'm wrong and if you find it interesting you can just elaborate further to it so uh, one of the thing that wherever i have you know uh, read about you or uh, you have expressed in an interview you have tried to explain one thing uh, that virab vir, uh, virasat samli ne vikas virasat sam, uh, sambhali ne vikas so can you just elaborate today uh, yeah so, uh, sure so when i said heritage is my identity your identity i said it grounds you so your virasat grounds you gives you roots if you have, if you put your analogy of a plant it gives you roots so that you are grounded it's very important to be grounded you know when you take a deep breath you become grounded for example so your your heritage grounds you it gives you roots and once you have roots then you can spread your wings just like a banyan tree you know you can spread your wings in the sky but if you are not grounded then you float away <laughs> so that's why virasat is your grounding and vikas is when with that grounding you can think you can question you don't have to worry about what people will say because you are grounded 
you know i don't care what people say about what things i do and uh, some people in the audience <laughs> might want to ask me questions about that <laughs> but uh, so that's what it is okay uh, the next one is like uh, there was a nice frame by you the question to ponder the future of civil civilization what is development yes 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 so that is also to do with uh, this whole business of who is what your priority about gold glory or god you know that we call people who make mega buildings as developers and uh, who who to make mega buildings you do it at the cost of nature right this is one example so if development is making buildings and making urban areas is that really development at shreyas for example we have a lot of open land which we have invested entirely in, in making uh, planting trees and keep making open spaces and i think will be the most developed school in ahmedabad or maybe in india because all our open spaces are there now you may say what about actual development i'm only referring to one segment of development because it gives you a reference point there are many other developments which you can debate about like this but in building our building tech of making a building on off site and putting it on site and not digging up the foundation or digging up the land at all is actually meant for shreyas because we need buildings but we can't we, we don't want to build the, like most people do of digging up the foundation and putting cement and all that so we have created this new type of building which will just float over the ground and you can build as many as you want you can dismantle them and they won't leave a footprint so development needs to be questioned all of us need to question what is development same for luxury same for luxury i think because all of us are entrepreneurs it's all badi gaadi bada makan fancy gaadi all that is luxury is it is it really luxury so luxury aspirations development all these are questions that i like to ponder over you know okay thank you the next point is like uh, we want to know i uh, learn something from you you know when i i read one of your article and uh, when you have uh, associated with victoria mills in your teenage and uh, you were not allowed to take any decisions by your grandfather and uh, then also you tried to you know took out a way out and uh, did the things to change and that is the turning point of your life if i am not wrong you done your research well i'm impressed darshan Thanks. so uh, yes actually questioning what i said was inculcated in school that you just question everything including your father your mother your grandfather whoever it is not that you fight with them but you question them so i questioned him why do you want to sell this mill the value at which you are selling is not even the value of one building in the mill why do you want to sell it with has so much land so my grandfather said that we have too many liabilities and so my cousin and i opposed him and uh, he was very angry with us but when we sold the land we were kind of justified you know so i think that that whole thing about okay these small instances are for a bigger learning the bigger learning is question 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 you know okay thank you sir and uh, there is one more uh, research what i did that when, at the time you took up house of mg which was almost 35000 square feet it had originally originally had only one bathroom and then you converted to complete hotel with 40 46 rooms without changing the outer structure of it so how was that yeah so how any any redevelopment or reuse requires putting in services house of mg is actually more than 100000 square feet uh, there was a small built up portion which was 35000 but you are right there were no bathroom so all the services were put in place through interesting design and today if you look at it somebody may not be able to identify that this bathroom is actually not designed as a bathroom so that is part of architectural layout and a sensible i think for most part the restoration design works well 
so when a good restoration design versus a not so good one is this is the details which go into it but it was challenging yes Thank so you. same for kitchens bathrooms huge kitchens there was no kitchen like that you know there was a small kitchen okay hmm. thank you uh, then we have a uh, uh, interesting thing like we as a ganesians from learning of a legend in bni amdavad what we started we made a first first movers advantage but mr abhay mangaldas couldn't take the first mover advantage of his desktop business in late 1980s so the learnings from them them we would like to know i think the this very true when you are ahead of the curve which means the curve has not even started so when you are ahead of it you still have to wait and you need deep pockets for the curve to even start going up you know so first mover advantage works only for people with deep pockets and as i said at that time i didn't have deep pockets at all not that i have them now but i have sustainable sustaining capacity just now for my uh, my housing project because of the fact that we have something else going but unless you have deep pockets look at look at this guy uh, oyo and all these new companies are losing money and over fist but they have deep pockets so they have that advantage and they keep it going so the desktop publishing was a service and nobody appreciated it at that time and so eventually had to sell out we sold to actually business india yeah the news uh, magazine at that time yes because it your desktop business helped in uh, creating the complete yes. magazine yes. and yes. people used to copy paste and keep it yes. and yes yes thank you and i also found that you are following maybe i'm right, right or wrong adi sankracharya and uh, you like to share something on his quotes or something <laughs> that you saw on my instagram which my dog chewed up yes. but i really i have i must say i have a very short attention span for uh, reading therefore i do more audio books which i can listen to rather than read and uh i do read about philosophy i do read about uh, autobiographies and uh since i live alone with my dogs i have all the time in the world to to do things which uh, perhaps a person with a family may find difficult to find time for you know so my hobbies are quite varied yeah that was a uh, that was a question when everybody used to ask when you will be getting married so i will tell that you have converted that question to be a usp of yours in today's time no so i am questioning the very idea of marriage i don't think there are too many people in this who can answer that satisfactorily why they got married you know <laughs> other than the fact that that's the thing you do right correct i'll tell you a story actually just about since you asked me about marriage you know people people ask me that why are you growing a beard hmm now you are clean shaven so i said i didn't do anything the beard grew you are the one who went and shaved it you know so so just like that i did it's marriage doesn't happen naturally you went and got married are you are married i guess no sudarshan yes so you went and got married i am just marriage or no marriage of course you want to uh, share your life and sharing is one of the best things so i'm absolutely for uh, no i'm saying that i am not discounting the idea of sharing my life with somebody at all <laughs> very true if you get applicants let me know <laughs> <laughs> sure now i'll be taking by rest of the points uh, what i covered you have surely taken up everything uh, there's one question on your travel i'll ask you later and i'll put some questions from the uh, participants what what are there so there's uh, ratan rajai who is asked is there any way we can work on schooling project with him and replicate it here in mumbai or our places around mumbai so there's someone from bombay who wants to learn about uh, the schooling for yeah, that absolutely we we would love to share our knowledge essentially you need to have a big place so if you have big place in nature then um, then it can work but if you are in a small place in a building then it's difficult 
So uh, any email address where he can uh, get connected? Sure, sure. You can share mine on the chat. Okay. Thank you. Next question is from uh, Sujan Singh Gular. I want to know how he thinks on new designs and new innovations, like his inspiration or how he put up new things on paper. Can you repeat that? I want to know how he thinks on a new designs and new innovations, like his inspiration or how you put up new things on a paper. So essentially, every essentially as my mind thinks and looks at problems. If you look around, would you say that building way we build is a problem or not? Now, if you don't say that it's a problem, then it's not, then you, you don't think of it further. But if you say, you know, this is ridiculous, you can't build like this, then you'll start thinking of how can you build if you cannot build like this. So the starting point is to recognize inefficiencies. And there are inefficiencies all around us, you know. <laughs> The, the, the idea of making a chapati is part of that because making a chapati is really messy, you know. How many of you can make a chapati? It's really difficult. So it's a problem. How do you solve that problem? Or for, for tongue cleaning, that, that device that we've done, you will be surprised that in America, in India is one of the only countries where they clean their tongue. Though cleaning your tongue is one of the most important things for oral hygiene. And people do it with a brush. So how do you get somebody to clean that tongue who doesn't clean that tongue? That is the idea. And then you try and figure out how to do it. So the idea of solving the problem was that instead of introducing a new product, you introduce an existing product by incorporating the extra feature in it, you know, which is the tongue cleaner, which comes out of the handle. So the design, it's called design thinking. You think of a problem and then you solve it. That would have answered Sudan's question. We have next question from Sri Lakshmi Nair. How do you upskill yourself in your own business? Uh, if we are not from the background, for example, if someone is working in a hospitality, hospitality business, but has no degree or education in it, how does she, he or she become efficient? So upskilling is nothing about education at all. Upskilling, what is a skill? A skill is something that you derive out of practice and a set way of doing things. For example, we are doing a Zoom call. This is upskilling. How long ago, how many of you did a Zoom call? I didn't do a single Zoom call 15 days ago. I used to do Skype. So this is upskilling. This is efficiency. Instead of traveling, many people will choose to do a Zoom call. What is that? It's very efficient. It's upskilling. We have 100 people on this thing. That is what upskilling is. And you do upskilling normally when you're faced with a problem. But so that to try and solve the problem, but you can do upskilling also to constantly keep aware of new technology, what's happening in the world and try and keeping up with those new changing times. You need to improve the knowledge yourself first, then of your staff. And of course, technology is a big example because no business can survive without really good tech support. At House of MG, we have a a technology department since the last 10, 15 years, that's dedicated tech team, which only does technology. And we work with a lot of different uh, partners in that. That is very informative to know. From 10, 15 years, you have been doing, doing that. So people also want to know uh, the answer for Bhamik for the second question, what Sir had asked, what is the result for the second question? If the polling has been done. Second poll, uh, the goal. Yeah. Yep. Just a second. Uh, here the answer on the screen. Oh my God. The 57% are karma yogis. Yes, sir. What does it mean? Maybe we don't have time to answer that because I, I, I would have never thought because I myself and I would say I'm still gunning for glory, you know. So we have a very involved uh, BNI audience here. I'm very <laughs> impressed. <laughs> they are far ahead of me. Maybe they are <laughs> legends, you know. I need to learn <laughs> because because if God truly inspires you to go to work every morning, I can see 
I can see that uh, Bhavik, you have a Shinaji at the back. But yes, sir. I don't mean that God. You know that. I know. I know that. It's so, a universal God. Is it's, it's a it's a point here. Yeah. Your motivation is of course to feed your family, but because you are born in this world, that you have to do something. And what do you do? Whatever you do needs to impact larger humanity. So that is kind of the direction I meant. It can go into deeper philosophy, but working as a karma yogi. But anyway, I'm I'm very happy to see this. Thank you, sir. So there's one question from Dishank. What is the one thing that you will do differently once the work from home phase ends? So that's actually something that we all should think of. As I said in my goal already, I am thinking ahead that what is development? You somebody asked what is development. So I think instead of taking a plane and going to meet somebody, if one can do the, avoid that and do it without burning that carbon, that's one thing. Sustainability. The earth. Look, everybody is talking about how beautiful the air has become, how clean our rivers have become, how. you can see the mountains from like uh, 200 miles all these things are truly truly something that we need to to see and see how our actions contribute to the problem so if we can take actions to become more environmentally uh, 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 conscious of each and every decision that we take uh, right from keeping your tap shut when you brush to taking short of not going in a car alone i am guilty of that uh, using a car tool or something the things like that or going on a bike things like this are what the what nature is telling us you know so when when this young uh, greta was talking about reducing carbon and all the world leaders were mocking her now <laughs> nature has managed to accomplish what she wanted just like that with a virus that we don't we can't do anything about so it's extremely humbling and i think if we let this humbling experience pass us by then we'll be doing a huge disservice very true or we will in next future we may again see something like this and we will have to sit home exactly <laughs> so there's a question from bhavesh vora new building designs does it comply to green buildings and what are the materials that you use roofing or vertical walls so i don't know if this is slightly technical cash question but essentially a building is nothing but a skeleton and skin primarily a building is a skeleton with skin so the skeleton is concrete or steel in most conventional buildings and the skin is normally a cement wall or a partition wall or whatever it is you know so this cannot be replaced so one of our building design is a shell structure like a crab it has no the crab has no skeleton you know the shell outer protection itself is its structure so our uh, structure that dome structure which i showed is like that it has no framing inside it is a geometry of shapes which is supporting itself this is inspired by a designer called buckminster fuller who designed the geodesic dome you may look it up it's amazing and he did the calico dome in amdavar many many years ago for the sarabhai family for calico mills it it is broken down but it was near on relief road so this is one way of building which is very efficient where you don't have the structure the, the skeleton at all and the skin in other buildings we have the skeleton you saw the 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 metal skeleton the skin can be anything which is a uh, uh, weather resistant so we are using aluminum we are using corrugated uh, metal sheets for the roofing and for uh, for the skin we are using cement sheets we are using bamboo board and flooring we are using wood i think wood is the most efficient and carbon neutral uh, renewable uh, material especially reused wood you know or bamboo bamboo boards okay thank you yes it was technical 
and Bhavesh would have been clear on that. So two more questions to go before I end today's session. So the uh, one question is from uh, Mr. Vivek Parikh. What do you mean by less is more? If you can elaborate that point. So I would recommend those people who are interested in design to Google what is good design, okay? And they will find uh, a name of a German designer called Dieter Rams, D-I-E-T-E-R-R-A-M-S. He made a list of 10 points which make up excellent, meaning you, you, it's a checklist of what is a good design. I'm a great believer in checklists. So if you go with this checklist, at the end of it, you do something for a function, you know, and that it can look beautiful is important, but it's a secondary. It cannot look beautiful at the cost of the function. So mostly one overplays the decoration of any design, which is more part of it. Less is Gandhi's kutir. I mean, it's bare, but it's so, for me, it's the ultimate good design, you know, where you have nothing. It's more an a issue where you, you primary focus is on function and the form part of it, the visual part of it is kept to, of course, you pay attention to it, but not overboard. Does that answer the question? Hmm. Yeah, he's nodding the head, so I think it does. Okay. So uh, thank you, uh, everyone. And if your feedbacks to the session, you can share in our official group. We will be sharing all the feedbacks with uh, well, sir. Uh, Rishabh Bhai will be sending all the feedbacks to him. So before, thank you, everyone, for attending and participating in this week's Learning from the Legend Series 4 and making such a positive contribution. The speaker for the next Series 5 is Ms. Richa Nirud, Indian journalist, invited by Meenal Goswami on Friday, 17th April at 1 p.m. So any uh, ending quotes, sir, you would like to share and we will just take apart. Ending quotes. So the quote is it's more of, a, of what drives me is this whole idea. And I think we should all this is really the time to consider to change our uh, behavior uh, and instead of competing, start collaborating. Instead of rivalries, start, start collaborating, you know. So it's time to cooperate and collaborate and uh, use this time to resolve conflicts because everybody has time and everybody is thinking. So that's one thing that I'm doing. I'm trying to resolve the conflicts that I have amongst a few people uh, in the win-win kind of scenario. And I think if we can do that, it'll be great. Thank you very much, everybody. I really enjoyed that. I appreciate it. We enjoyed and we learned a lot. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much.